So previously we looked at blocks, threaded fasteners, bearing friction. This time we're going to expand out and look at thrust bearings. For thrust bearings, what you have is an entire surface that's pushed up against something and rotating, where the entire surface is kind of pushing and rotating. You can have um, an entire circle, or maybe you just have a collar where the edge of it's rotating and the center is like an axle or something. Thinking through the equations on this, we have two things. We have a force that is pushing against it. And this P, this is a force. This is not a pressure. It's just they labeled it as P. Okay, so we're pushing against it and we're twisting it. And if we want to understand that moment, so R cross F, remember this is a cross product where the force to twist it, this is actually going to be the, the friction force. So U times N, where the normal force is made up of how hard you're pushing against it. And this time that force is going to be evenly distributed around the area it's pushing up against. So we can kind of divide the pressure, the, divide the force over area times change in area. And we're going to integrate this over the area. So, so think about one little element of surface that has a force being pushed against it and the moment to try and turn this thing. And we're going to integrate this thing. If it has kind of an axle in the middle of it, so we have R1 and R2, then our area is going to be the difference between those two radiuses. If it it's not hollow. If it's a solid circle, we can just ignore that R1. But if you crank through this integral, through the radius and through 0 to 2 pi, this is the equation you get for your moment. So the moment is equal to 2 thirds times your friction coefficient times the force you're pushing it at. And then it's R2 minus R1, R2 minus... So those are the different radiuses on here. And if you get rid of R1, it turns into this equation right here. So basically, this one is just a plug and chug. If you have the right equation and you know your force, your moment, your friction coefficient, you can relate all the, that stuff through this equation. So let's go ahead and look at an example problem. So this is something that you would like to see in the book. So we say, knowing we have a couple of magnitude 30 newton meters. Okay, so we're twisting it around with 30 newton meters. That's the M part of the equation. And we're going to rotate this shaft. We want to find the coefficient of static friction. Okay, so here's what we want to determine is this piece of the equation between the surfaces of contact and not shown in this equation. So they're also going to give us the force that we're pushing against it with. So if we push down on this with 4,000 Newton force and we have the two radiuses, so half of 50 and half of 120, we can just plug and chug into this equation. And in this case, the only thing that we don't know in here is our friction coefficient. So super easy, just plug and chug into that equation if you know what equation goes with what. So this is coming back to kind of those cheat sheets. Of we're going to go through different scenarios. And if you can attach the right equation to the right scenario, then you are good to go on these problems. So make an equation sheet for yourself and be able to identify what equation goes with what, what scenario.